Good afternoon everyone, it's James Braithwaite once again from the offices of Braithwaite Physiotherapy. I should say the new offices of Braithwaite Physiotherapy just moved into a new space down the street from where I was before at 208 Bloor West in, uh, in Toronto and you can see we're here, we've got a great view of the city, it's a beautiful day, um, almost springtime. Actually I think technically it is springtime, isn't it? Uh, today, 21st of March. Uh, that we're, is the day that we're filming this, so that's kind of exciting. So, you know, by all means, come visit me here at 208 Plur West in Unit 901. But more importantly, we're going to talk today, we're going to do a follow-up in the previous uh, video where we were discussing uh, tendinopathies, and today we're going to talk about plantar fasciitis. Now, your plantar fascia is a fascia, it's not technically a tendon in the same sense of other tendons that connect muscle bellies to bones, the, the plantar fascia is a, a, a piece of uh, connective tissue similar to a tendon that stretches between uh, different, uh, two different bones, your calcaneus and the heads of your metatarsals in your foot, but it still acts very similarly to um, a tendon. So I like to think of treating uh, plantar fasciitis in, in some of the same ways that I might treat a Achilles tendinopathy or a tennis elbow or something like that, which are more traditional tendinopathies. So let's talk about some of the things that you can do for or your plantar fasciitis. Now remember that this is the type of problem that's typically um, characterized by pain that's just awful, the worst first few steps after you get out of bed in the morning. People often say I can't walk on the floor, especially a hardwood floor, without having some kind of, uh, you know, some, like a, 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 a clog or a, what's the word I'm looking for, a slipper? a slipper as if I couldn't remember that on your foot. So people like to have a little bit of support, especially again those first few steps in the morning or after having stand, um, stand, stood up from sitting for a long time. So if that's your pain then plantar fasciitis might be your issue. Um, it typically is found on the um, uh, just in front of your heel towards the inside of your foot, sort of in this region. There's a lot of other things that look like plantar fasciitis um, where uh, pain may manifest elsewhere, like if it's directly over the heel, it might be something else. If, if it's towards the back, it might be um, another issue. There's all kinds of different things that kind of look similar to plantar fasciitis um, but aren't. And so um, if that's one of your problems, then these exercises may not be for you, but that's what the physiotherapist like me is here to help you figure out. So if you know that you do have plantar fasciitis, here's some quick and dirty um, things that you can do for yourself. So the traditional stuff, let's start with that. Um, roll it. So I like to use a lacrosse ball. Some people will use a frozen water bottle, um, uh, a rolling pin. I always love using rolling pins. That works too. That's just fine. Get something. Pick something. Find it. Get it underneath your foot. Find that tender spot. And you don't have to set an Olympic record, right? You don't have to set an Olympic record, but you are going to roll that out. And actually, you can roll it in different directions. I like to cross friction it um, um, perpendicular to the lines of the fibers of the plantar fascia, which runs in this direction across the bottom of your foot. So you can try cross friction it perpendicular to that. A little bit of load, again, we're not setting an Olympic record with this. If you are going to do frictioning like this, you know, five to eight minutes, maybe even eight minutes would be really good. If you get a little bit of numbness, that's okay. Um, lasting increase in pain is not okay, so don't let that happen. Um, and so yeah, try that eight minutes of, of uh, rolling with, you know, the implement of torture of your choice. Have fun with that. Um, Ice, uh, a lot of people like to use an ice massage, so taking an ice cube or um, fill a styrofoam cup with some water, put it in the freezer and then peel away the bottom once it's frozen and you get this little sort of uh, icicle type uh, thing that you can use to just sort of um, um, uh, ice the, the area. Some people find that to be really effective. Um, for me, it's kind of, if it works for you, that's okay. I think it's more of a numbing effect, which still is helpful. I'm not sure that it cures the underlying problem, and it certainly won't help with getting circulation into the area, which always helps with healing, of course. But if that works for you, and for a lot of people, they find that, that does give them relief, it's certainly something that's worth trying as well, just bearing those, uh, those caveats in mind. But if we were to treat a tendinopathy, which again, this isn't a traditional tendinopathy, but if we were to treat it like a tendinopathy, which I like to do, um, the, the research-oriented protocols that we've talked about in the past around, um, in other videos around tennis elbow include, as you might recall, a stretching element followed by a strengthening element followed once again by another stretch. So stretch, then strength exercise, then stretch, right? So if we were to do that for the plantar fascia, we would pick something like this. If you're going to do a stretch, you can think of getting, you know how we've, uh, I think in the past we've talked about getting in, uh, an Achilles stretch on, right? So where you're, 
your heel is behind you like this. And then what you can do to really bring it on your plantar fascia is keep that angle at your, at your ankle while coming onto your toes like that. And that'll bring a nice stretch into that plantar fascia structure across the bottom of your foot. See how I'm just I'm keeping my ankle flexed and I'm now um, flexing over onto my toes as well. Technically, actually, I'm extending my toes. But hanging out in this position for 30 seconds to a couple of minutes is a great little stretch for your, for your um, uh, plantar fascia. You can also do something like this. You can get a, uh, a strap, right? Take your strap, get it across your toes. You're sort of hanging out. You're, you're watching TV at night. You can just bring your, your toes up like that with a strap, a yoga strap like the one I have on works really nicely right now. So that, that works just fine. You can sort of, you know, be up while you're watching TV, hanging out, you know, drinking that whatever it is that you like to drink. Just hanging out in this position. Um, there's a great little device out there called a Strasbourg sock. If you've not heard of it, Google it. Strasbourg sock, spelt the same way as the city in Germany. Um, it's got um, one of those uh, strange German letters in there, you know, like the... The, the weird B. Anyway, whatever, it's a Strasbourg sock. Try it, take a look at it. Um, what they do is they bring your foot, they, it's a sock that has an, a strap that attaches from your toes to your shin, so it, it holds you into the stretch position like that. Really nice for plantar fascia issues as well. I quite like that device, so you can uh, Google that. We'll put a link to um, some information on the uh, video notes below, so check that out as well. It's a great way to stretch. For your strength exercise, I really like um, uh, negative heel drops. So take like a board or get a step um, or even just get onto a step in your home like on your set of stairs and you're going to place your your piece of whatever on the floor. My, uh, my wood strap is going there. Then I'm going to push myself up onto my heels with help from the other side of my other foot. You notice how my left foot is on the ground helping me up. Then I'm going to lift that foot off the ground and slowly lower. Right? Up slowly lower, up, slowly lower, and doing three sets of ten like this. Help up with the other foot, slowly lower down, right? Just like that. Three sets of ten of that, and then follow it up with yet another stretch, just like what we just talked about, whether it's Strasbourg sock, or you're using the band, or you're um, stretching against a wall like this, it doesn't matter. You take your favorite one and stretch and remember that when you're holding a stretch, 30 seconds to 2 minutes is the time. Use that protocol, stretch, then strength training exercise, then finish it with another stretch. And remember, you can always do those other things that we talked about too, um, with the rolling and the ice massage. Some people really like that. Um, so you take your pick of what works best for you, okay? A little bit of manual therapy from a physiotherapist always helps as well. I have some value to offer, at least in person as well. So if you have any questions about plantar fasciitis, um, then, you know, obviously don't feel uh, in any way hesitant to contact me. Love uh, uh, getting your questions and, uh, and certainly always love hearing from people. So welcome to the new office here at Braceway Physiotherapy. Hopefully this video, video gives you some insight into plantar fasciitis and I look forward to speaking with you next time as well.